All right, part two, everyone. We're working on our contour drawing, and uh, we're doing some uh, flowers in a, in a jar with some uh, fruits, a, a pepper and a, and a tomato. And so we're in the middle of, pros uh, the middle of our process of contour drawing. Um, and again, we were, we were saying that with our contour drawing, we want to avoid um, when we're drawing, we want to avoid just sort of thinking of things as um, its most basic shape, and then just and then just drawing a quick rendition of that shape. So, if we say the tomato is round, um, we wouldn't want to just say, "Okay, tomato is round, so let's draw the tomato," and that's it. We would want to take our time and and carefully look at the tomato and, and see the, all the different interesting angles that it has. And we take our time when we contour draw and then sometimes if we see a shadow we'll go into the shadow. And so we're not always um, drawing a complete shape. We're sometimes drawing a shape and then g going into other shapes such as shadows or contours of the actual um, subject matter. Sometimes we go out and do a, a shadow shape. So contour drawing is going really slow, really careful, and following the, taking our time to really notice all the minor changes in shapes and angles as we go. And we take our time and we stop and kind of like jog in place, so to speak. If we are not sure of our next angle or where we're going to go next, we can stop and, t and take a look and then look back over at our, our, our setup over there. Like my setup is over here to the right. So I'm, lo I'm constantly looking back and forth as I draw. And if I get stuck where I'm not sure where I'm going to go next, I just stop, keep the pencil on the paper, and then continue on and continue on with our drawing. So I guess, in a sense, contour drawing... Um, helps you to learn how to draw really fine angles and um, take your time and figure uh, out the more critical and very important um, basics of drawing so that you're capturing all the minute details and angles as you go and training your eye to see them and to as you train your eye you're actually training your eye and your hand to be coordinated together to capture those very fine details as you go slowly and you'll get quicker as you go so just another contour drawing tip there tidbit for a contour drawing um, it starts off as a slower process and then as you as time goes on you'll get faster and you'll be more confident with your angles and um, it really comes along nicely so here we're going to continue so I'll continue on here and I'll just do that quick line out to the edge of the paper Okay, now I'm going to continue on up here with it, at the vase, and I had Here I'm taking my time, I'm looking at the angles. And I'll just put a couple lines there. Okay, now I'm going to continue on. Maybe I'll go around here. And keep my pencil on the paper. I'm doing the stems now. Okay, 
and then we'll go over here and we'll get some of the leaves here. There's a couple leaves here. And then we'll get that, we'll do the rows. And I'm not going to do every petal of the rose. Roses are, are, in, are actually, I find they're probably one of the, diff they're very difficult to draw actually. I, I always had a hard time doing the roses because there's so many like um, different leaves and, and folds in the roses a lot of times that you, it can be very fatiguing to try to draw them with uh, accuracy. So I just sort of get the general idea of some of the leaves and folds on the top of the rose here and then the rest we can just basically we'll, we'll paint that in as we go. Okay so this looks pretty good we we have the idea of our pepper our vase with fla a couple flowers a rose and uh, a lily with some leaves some green leaves and then we have a, a tomato over here to the right and I'll maybe just draw in this line. So now that's pretty much very simple to do I think we all can admit that this is quite simple we're going to use the white backdrop and the white table we use the foam board again this is just a small smaller version of what I have across from me this is just sort of like a small version of the um, of the uh, setup I have across from me to the right over this way and it simplifies everything you can see the shapes a lot better when you work on a white background you could also use a white sheet over the top of a table or or a chair when you're drawing something like this so um, you can come up with creative ideas all right so for the most part we have a good contour drawing here so we're going we're going to start in we'll we'll pick get some get our brushes and we'll some paints we'll get our palette and we'll start with our um, our colors now here we're going to um, I'm going to use my standard palette I have a video Chris Petrie's standard palette and basically this is the palette I use all the time I'll spritz a little water on it um, I had it spritzed before, but it looks like it needs some more water, so I'm just going to add a little more water to it. The paint's nice and uh, goopy, and that's important for our painting. We don't want to have dried out paint. We want to make sure we have nice, soft, moist, uh, juicy paint to work with. And uh, so we'll, we'll start in here, and um, I'll have a, a nice Kalinske sable brush, fresh water in a, in a container. A nice uh, Kalinsky sable brush, and we'll we'll start. Let's uh, we'll start with the pepper. So for the pepper, we're just gonna I'll mix some greens on here just to get some olive green, sap green, viridian green, a little bit of blue. So that's the colors we're gonna use, and I'm just gonna dip right into the to the green and blue. The light's coming from the light is coming from the right this way, so actually the darker green is going to be over here. So I'm going to and then I'm going to go in and get some raw sienna. And maybe we'll, we'll tie in a nice shadow here. And then as we go over to the right, Do a little cad yellow. I'm going to leave a highlight over here.
Okay, let's do some more shadowing. Uh, go in and get some raw sienna. A little bit of that blue and the green. And loosen up a little bit and just do a couple splashes. Okay, now Okay, with this jar, I'm just going to give it a touch of color, some uh, green, some of the same colors we're using, just to um, just to give it some color. And okay, now we're I'm gonna take some cadmium red and some alizarin crimson. And we'll we'll do some of the rows here. So this is gonna be the light side of the rows. I'll leave some highlights here and there, just a little bit on the top of the rows. And Right, now we're looking pretty good. We have some nice beautiful color on the paper here. Let's let's go in with some more cadmium red. Let's do the tomato. Um, so for the tomato, we'll just go in and we'll leave a highlight on the top of the tomato. So I'll leave a highlight up here. Okay, so we, I left the highlight on the top of the tomato. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of green and blue, a little bit of a shadow on the right side. Again, we'll do some raw sienna for the shadow and a little bit of that blue and green. So we could have a, so let's tie in that shadow. And okay, so that's the tomato. We left a shadow on the top. We've got our red rose on top. We're doing um. Okay, and then let's, uh, maybe we'll do some color around the white lily. So this is where we're going to negative, we're going to do some negative shape painting where we paint around a, the subject matter. And I'll just sort of Put a little color onto the paper. And let's do a little more green and blue, French ultramarine blue and green, and we'll start in to our leaves over here. Okay, we're coming up on 